بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور تدائی کنٹینیوئنگ دی ٹاپک آف فلٹرنگ تدائی وی ڈسکس دی سیکنڈ ٹائپ آف فلٹرز دوز آر دی فریکوینسی سیلیکٹیو فلٹرز ناو دس وٹ ایو ریٹن لیٹ اٹ بی وی ویل ڈسکس ایچ اینڈ ایوری تھنگ ون بائی ون سو فریکوینسی سیلیکٹیو فلٹرز وٹ آر دی so as the name suggests selective so it comes from selection which means that when an input is applied so the filter would select some frequencies and that selection would be both for for filtering for 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 both for passing and for rejecting now what is the criteria whatever it is we are going to study it one by one first the first question is number one why frequency selective filters why frequency selection or why do we need to attenuate or reject some frequency components as the definition is so there are two basic things number one number one is noise number one is noise so in any system if a noise gets involved you need to filter it out you need to get it out of the information whenever you're sending information you're receiving information you have any signal any general signal so noise gets into it and that we do not want so to remove that noise from it to separate the noise from my original signal i would need what i would need a filter that is number one Fine. The second application, the ma the major application. Okay, these are the two major applications. There are other applications as well. The book has touched the major. The second major application is the in the communication systems, in the communication systems. So, which means whenever you launch any communication system, so you are given. A, a, a specific frequency a specific bandwidth to operate in so for that when you are transmitting a signal when you are transmitting a signal so you need it to be in that particular frequency okay but the, it's a property of the system or you say whatever it is noise is everywhere so when we are generating a signal generating some information transmitting it so we there would when we are producing a signal so there would be some some amount of an unwanted signal that is produced and that unwanted signal is the noise so we do not want to transmit that unwanted signal because that would be at not at the desired frequency so which means we also have to to, 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 to remove that out from our transmitted signal so which means that we also need a filter at the transmission end as well fine because the, 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 regulate, the regulatory authority the government has only allowed us a specific bandwidth and the noise frequency is not lying in that allowed bandwidth so we need to remove it so this was a general background why frequency selection or why attenuating some frequencies so based on their function their job there are these four major types of these frequency selective filters low pass high pass band pass and band stop so number one low pass filter lpf as the name suggests it passes the lower frequencies whatever the lower frequencies it would pass it now what do i mean by the low frequency so we have a range and i will i will, I will definitely tell about it so they pass the lower frequencies and rejects or you can say blocks the higher frequencies but you know the complete rejection or the complete blockage is uh, uh, is 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 not uh, achievable in the practical cases so i've written it attenuate so attenuate means what to minimize as it could as to the maximum extent as it could be so to the minimum level so it passes the lower frequencies and attenuates the higher frequencies number two is the high pass filter so what does this do this lets go this passes the higher frequencies and blocks or attenuates the lower frequencies fine the third is the band pass filter so again as the name suggests band pass so it would pass 
a specific band of frequencies and reject the other now band so a specific portion a specific region a specific amount it would pass it and it would attenuate the rest of the signal number four the band stop filter so it would again stop a particular portion stop a particular band of frequencies and and it would let go it would pass the rest the whole of the signal these two combined are known as what happened nothing these two combined something happened these two combined are known as the the notch filters these two combined are known as the notch filters uh, and what does this notch mean this notch uh, is is the is the what this notch is that is that band that we are talking about so that band that particular area is known as the notch so what i was saying that happened that this, so this mic uh, this thing what is this called this dropped off anyways now this was the basic definition of filters the basic uh, what are filters the basic names of the filters the basic types of the filters okay now what do we have so now uh, the the next thing is we need to talk about the quality of the filters fine and what do i mean by quality the goodness how good is the filter in its and it's working right so how do we define we need to have a parameter to define the quality or the working or the goodness of the filter so out of that we have three points number a how effective is the filter in passing frequencies in its pass band so this means that by definition the the for which the filter is designed for the frequencies for which the filter is designed to pass how effectively is it passing those frequencies is it also blocking some of the possible frequencies or it is passing more frequencies than the desired yes anything could happen so that is number one point the second is how effective is the filter in stopping the frequencies in the stop band this means what the free the filter uh, the, the the desired filter has to stop the desired frequencies so how how good is it stopping those frequencies is it stopping all of them is it letting some of them go or is it stopping some extra frequencies as well so this would define the quality of the filter also number three how sharp is the transition near the cut off frequency now cut off frequency what is the cut off frequency so cut off frequency is that frequency at which the filter goes from the stop band to the pass band or it goes from the pass band to the stop band write the definition what is the cut off frequency so write it please the frequency at which filter goes from pass to stop or from stop to pass band and 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 am i writing it correct so let me check let me check yes so uh, this is the you can say both or one or whatever it is you could just say that the the, the book has written what the book has written the word that cut off frequencies are the frequencies defining the boundaries between the frequencies that are present uh, that are passed and that are rejected so this is basically the boundary uh, 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 so yes i've written it correct but according to book you can, a book definition if you want to use that proper word so the proper word is a boundary this is a boundary between the pass and the stop band anyways coming to this third point transition so so let's say i discuss it later just give me a minute okay now how uh, on what base do we define these filters that these are passing these frequencies and they're not passing and they're rejecting and this and that we define them on the basis of 
the frequency response we define the type of the filter by the frequency response of the filter and frequency response you know very well very well so the book has only drawn the graphs i will only draw the graph and that would be it for it anyways let's say uh, so i have four types so i use four colors i am only interested in the magnitude of it so if this is my omega axis this is the magnitude of the frequency response h of j omega so if i talk about a low pass filter so how would this be this would pass the lower frequencies which is something like this let's say this is the lower frequency range and it would block the higher frequencies and i told you what is the thing that the, the range the limit the reference what do i mean by low what do i mean by high so for that i have the term for that i have the term cutoff frequency so the low pass filter would pass the frequencies that are less than the cutoff frequency on the positive side on the negative side the cutoff frequency is represented by an omega c so when the frequencies come greater than omega c the cutoff frequency the low pass filter blocks it this is the definition of the frequency response of a low pass filter fine yes number two number two is let's say a high pass filter if this is my omega axis this is the magnitude of h of j omega now what it would do it would stop the lower frequencies and pass the higher frequencies now again what do i mean by lower and higher so i have the term cutoff frequency so it would stop the frequencies that are less than the cutoff frequency and it would pass the frequencies that are greater than the cutoff frequency and this is what a low pass uh, this is what a high pass filter does is that fine it is okay the third the third is a band pass filter so let me have it over here this is my h of j omega the magnitude of it so it would pass a specific band of frequencies and let's say let's say this is the band this is this band and similarly on the left hand side as well let's say this is the band so this is passing a specific band of frequency and it is it is attenuating or in the ideal case these are the ideal cases they are rejecting all other frequencies so for this we have the lower cutoff frequency and we have the upper cutoff frequency so let's say i name it by omega c1 omega c2 similarly negative omega c1 negative omega c2 so this is for a band pass filter fine okay and the last that remains is now the band stop filter so what would that do what would that do it would stop a band of frequency and it would let the others go so let's say this is that band which it is stopping from an omega c1 to an omega c2 similarly on the left hand side as well let's say negative omega c1 negative omega c2 so it is stopping these two bands and it is you know passing the other all of the other signal is that okay yes it is so this is a band stop filter and is that clear till here 
Now the pass band and the stop band. So we have definitions. One is pass band, the other is stop band. So pass band is what in which the in which the frequencies are getting passed. So for a, for for this a high pass low pass filter, this is your pass band. Let's say PB. And and when it's greater than this, so this is your stop band. Similarly over here. It's now your stop band. Fine. Similarly for this case. Now this is passing these frequencies. So till here it is your pass band. It is stopping in this range. So this is your stop band. Uh, uh, stop band B. Similarly again it's passing over here. So at this side this is again a pass band. The green and the red. This is being stopped. Similarly, at this side, it's also being stopped. Over here, it's being passed. So, this is the pass band. This is the pass band. And greater than this, this is again the stop band. Fine. Similarly, over here, this one is the stop band. This one is the pass band. This one is again the pass band. This one is the stop band. This one is the pass band. That is it. That is it. Now, now, I used the word ideal. Why did I use that word ideal? Anyways, first, transition near the cutoff frequency. So over here, if you have a look, I missed that. I, I said that I will explain this point later. The transition means the jump or the coming from the one band to other band the boundary between the pass band to stop band so over here you have a pass band to this side you have a stop band this is a sharp transition which means this is a hundred percent accurate filter the sharper it is the best it is so this is a sharp transition right similarly over here sharp transition sharp transition sharp so the more the the, the, the sharp the transition is, the greater is the filter response. And that is the meaning of this third point. Now I use the term ideal. So why did I use that term? So I used it because these things, when do we generally use ideal? We use them that for the things that we cannot use in our practical life. Why we cannot use? Because they cannot be implemented physically. They cannot be physically dealt with. Right? Why is that? Why is that? If I am talking of the system that I have designed the very best possible filters, but I cannot use them. They are only good for designing on a paper. They are only good for designing on the board. They are only good for a basic understanding. I cannot take any work from them. I cannot design such a filter practically. Why? Why is that? Why is that? Do you have do you have the answer to this question? Do you have the answer to this question? Yes, you know it very well. You know it very well. You know it very well. Let me give the answer over there. This is the frequency response. If you check the corresponding impulse response, impulse response of ideal filters which is equal to h of t what would this be you know this again yes what would this be yes yes it would be a sing function it would be a sing function and i do not need to prove it over here why because we already know this where do we know this we know it from the rectangular gate pulse isn't this a rectangular gate pulse the exact would be there so the, the corresponding would be the sing function this is again some sort of a this would be 
inverted or maybe you get confused with the shape but again this is some sort of a rectangular pulse again it would be a, again the, four, uh, the the corresponding impulse response would be a sync function this is again some sort of a rectangular pulse so again the corresponding Fourier series Fourier series no impulse response would be a sync function similarly over here again so the sync function so why what is the problem with the sync function what is the problem with the sync function this is my h of t this is a very important point what is the problem with the sync function so yes you didn't give me the answer you didn't give me the answer that what why can i not use these filters if they have the very best possible outward sync function is an easy function what is the problem impulse response yes 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 you got it right you got it right have a look h of t the impulse response is this equal to zero no it's never equal to zero so it's not equal to zero 40 less than zero and this means what that this is a non-causal system this is a non-causal system and any practical system any practical system to be designed cannot be a non-causal system for a system to be practically implementable, designable, understandable, physically existable, it needs to be causal. And this particular system, this particular system is a non-causal system. This is a non-causal system. This is a non-causal system. This one is a non-causal. This one is a non-causal. Non we cannot define them physically, practically. That is it. That's the simple reason. And you knew it very well. You knew it very well. We know it from the properties of LTI systems. We have videos on this. We have studied it. So anyways, that is it. That is it for this video. But we have a question. And what's the question? The question is, if these are not practically designable or not physically exist, then what sort of filters would we use if we need a high pass filter? What sort of filter would we use if we need a low pass filter? If these are not existible, right? So, the answer to this question in the very next video. So, see you in the next video very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourself and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.